Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an S3 backend for storing your TF state files or Terraform state files and how to basically use DynamoDB for state locking. So the question which directly comes into mind is uh, what is state locking and why it is required. So when you're working in an organization where you have multiple developers working on your Terraform code, your infrastructure code, uh, there can be like concurrent operations of like modifying the infrastructure, right? The so people could be doing Terraform Apply, Terraform Plan concurrently because uh, nowadays people are spread across different geographies. So you don't know which user or which developer is doing what. So when there are concurrent operations of uh, like plan or apply, there are chances that your state file may get corrupted because of these concurrent operations. So Terraform actually has a mechanism to basically lock the file, lock the state file if one developer or one operation or one, uh, maybe it could be a CICD pipeline which is trying to modify the infrastructure. So how, it, how does that happen? So let's assume we have a user A and user B. So user A made some changes to Terraform code and did a Terraform plan or apply. Uh, during that time, user B also made the changes and he is also trying, he or she is also trying to do a Terraform plan or apply. So, but when user A ran apply, Terraform actually acquires a, co uh, a lock on the state file, on the current state file, and it basically populates the DynamoDB with a hash of that state file. So when user B tries to run its plan or its apply, uh, the Terraform again tries to acquire the lock by calculating the hash of the state file, but the hash already exists in the DynamoDB. So either the user B could wait and Terraform actually gives out that information to the user B that the lock is already pre present and also the user information who has actually acquired the lock. And either user B can wait or maybe cancel their operation. So that's how basically the locking mechanism work. So now let me show you how to set up uh, Terraform state locking with S3 bucket and DynamoDB. All right, so I'm on my terminal. So Terraform actually, I mean, for state locking, you actually need to have a S3 bucket and a DynamoDB table, right? So, but uh, with Terraform, the issue is that you cannot create your infrastructure and your uh, backend simultaneously. So Terraform actually assumes that you have the backend uh, S3 bucket and DynamoDB table already present, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to create a backend.tf file and then I will quickly create provider So I'm defining my provider and I'm quickly going to uh, declare two resources. Resource would be AWS S3 bucket estate bucket bucket would be TF state bucket music bucket for testing for I'll just give it my name. Uh, we can have versioning also enabled, so versioning. Okay, so this is going to create an S3 bucket and now I'm going to create a DynamoDB table for resource AWS DynamoDB underscore table. Again, this would be TF state table. name tf state table 
Billing mode, so there are a few things that you need to define with DynamoDB table. So billing mode is one. And for this, I'm going to define pay per request so that, I mean, for every read and write, you have to pay. Uh, I need to define my primary key. So primary key is defined as hash key. And that's going to be lock ID. And then I'm actually going to define my attributes in the table. So attribute name would be lock ID. But that's my primary key and type would be string and I think this should be sufficient to create a dynamo duty table and an S3 bucket so I'll just save this clear the screen and do a terraform in it okay this has now we do terraform apply All right so it has started creating it won't take much time because it's just an s3 bucket and a dynamo db table unlike an ec2 instance that takes some time so this should be fast All right, so creation complete. We got a warning because we were doing things pretty old way. So that's, that, that is something you can ignore. Now let me go to my AWS console and see, yeah, so the bucket is created. Let's look at the DynamoDB table. Tables, yeah, so both the things are created. Now what I'm going to do is let me clear the screen and I'll just rename my backend.tf to backend.tf.backup right because I don't want in for the next up, uh, apply I don't want this file to be evaluated because we already have what we need. Now I'm going to create uh, a main.tf And inside this first, I'm going to have a Terraform block to basically tell Terraform to use my S3 backend. Uh, backend S3 bucket would be TF state bucket for Tarik. key would be where you want your uh, state file to go so for now I can just have like uh, let's put in prod.tf state region us is one and dynamo db table yeah db table would be TF state table and we want to encrypt this so encrypt true so this tells Terraform to use our S3 backend and the Dynamo DB, DB, DB table for state locking and now we can define a resource maybe Again, I'll define in a simple AWS S3 bucket. AWS S3 bucket test bucket or state locking test. Uh, 
and that's pretty much it so i just want to define that resource only so we're defining a single resource and yeah that's pretty much it so save this and let's do terraform plan oh yeah so we need to initialize the backend variable is not allowed okay yeah got it so we just need to go to our main.ta file and name it terraform not allowed um, okay let's go back to the file oh I know why this is giving oh god so don't make these stupid mistakes so I think I, this requires code and that's why it is evaluating it as a variable my bad let's save this clear the screen and let's run in it again and hopefully this should work you can see acquiring state lock we want to copy existing to uh, let's say no all right initialization is done and let's do terraform apply So you understand, I think, what Terraform is doing. So before applying, it is taking, it is basically calculating the hash of your current state and in saving that or storing that hash key in your DynamoDB. So anytime if someone else is trying to run apply or plan, he will also calculate the hash of your current state and try to store it in DynamoDB, but the hash would already exist. And that is where it, he or she will not be able to get the lock on the state file. So that is basically the concept of state locking. All right, so let's go to our uh, AWS terminal. Okay, refresh. Let's go to S3. So our bucket is created. Let's see if we have the key. So we have the Terraform TF state key or our state file in S3. Uh, if you want, you can download this and view the content of the state file. So yeah, that's I think pretty much it. That's all I wanted to cover for this video. I hope you now understand how state locking actually works uh, in S3. I mean, there are a bunch of uh, resources on, on online which show how to set this up, but nobody actually ex explains how this is working, how the hash is being taken and how hash key is stored in DynamoDB, right? So that's all I wanted to cover for this video. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.